Awesome. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 2023 Board Election Open Community Forum. We're very excited to have you, and we're looking forward to getting to know the candidates better and answering some of the questions from the community. Um, just as a reminder, this forum is to serve as an opportunity for um, folks who need a visual um, learning opportunity and to learn more about the candidacy. So we're going to start out first by each candidate introducing themselves. So if you could say your name and your pronouns and take about 15 seconds. Me first, I guess. I'm yeah, older. anyone who wants to volunteer to go first. I don't know how everyone's camera is set up. Yeah. Next to Carlos Ospina <laughs> and uh, he, him, I guess. I... I'm Matthew Saunders. I'm he, him as well. Jump in. I am Faye Loren. I use she, they pronouns. I'm Mark Dorson. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Hi, I'm John Doyle. Uh, my pronouns are also he, him. Good day. I'm Vladimir Rudikov. He, him. Uh, Stephen Musgrave, uh, he, him. Hello, I'm Ashraf Papid. Um, also, he, him. Awesome. I believe that was all of the candidates. So community members, just as a reminder, we want to hear from you all. So if you have any questions, please put them into the chat um, or you can send them directly to Vaughn and I if you want to remain anonymous. Awesome. So we have a few prepared questions in the meantime um, bef if, before any of the community questions come in. So once again, um, I'll ask the question and then we can kind of just bounce around. So if anybody would like to volunteer first, just jump in. So our first question is, what is your approach to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy? I can jump in this one real quick. Um, so uh, I think my my approach, uh, approach to nonprofit uh, fundraising and philanthropy is, is really threefold. I think first, you need to be active instead of passive. I think we can't be passive to our approach in fundraising. It, <laughs> powers the Drupal project and the community. And if we're looking to actively engage in this initiative, uh, we, we really need to uh, go out to the community and, and uh, be proactive in this. I think secondly, we need to look for alternate funding sources. Um, right now, it's we're really heavily looking at uh, events and community contributions. And I think there's other options that we can explore. Um, you know, grants and, and other things are available to nonprofits. And I think there's uh, additional opportunity out there that we can look to the industry uh, to kind of get ideas out of. And lastly, I think just building, continuing to build on the community's message and what the Drupal project is and really focus on values uh, for the community and to the people who are going to contribute back and, and give money, uh, the values that they get out of it, as opposed to the need that we have as a project for that money. And I think uh, if we can focus on the outcomes, I think we can uh, can do a lot more uh, for engaging. So uh, really, I just think we need to take a more active approach to fundraising and uh, that'll help us drive the success of the Drupal project. Mm. That's great. Uh, um, my, 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 my approach is, uh, is, is, really, is really driven from my experience on other nonprofit boards and, uh, and also uh, working for nonprofits as a as an employee, um, and I like to think that these experiences have given me some uh, insight into effective fundraising philanthropy. I think the first thing is that an organization needs to have a cure a clear vision uh, mission uh, that donors will understand um, why it matters to them. Um, and I'm proud to actually have been one of the people that ha ha that helped craft the association's mission uh, ten years ago. So I'm pretty pretty familiar with it. Pretty familiar with uh, with uh, with uh, with how the how the association has approached that over the last uh, uh, over the last ten years. I also think that building relationships is more important than nearly anything else. Um, we need to be connected, and uh, people need to trust uh, the organizations that they donate to. 
Um, I agree that we need to diversify, diversify our funding sources. Um, Association has done some of this, done some experiments in the past, but those experiments seem to have sort of gone to the sidelines, things like tridruple and so forth. It's at uh, different points where we're, uh, we're providing different kinds of funding sources, but I agree that we need to diversify. Um, transparency is really important um, when we're dealing with, uh, with our communication to make sure that it's consistent. It goes right back to trust. Um, and one thing that we're very good about is, is events, right? Events and campaigns drive donors and supporters. We're pretty good about that. Um, and I think, I think that uh, with some additional partnerships, we can get better. Um, and I also think that there are two other bits. One is long-term planning. Um, we need to engage in long-term planning. And I know the association does this. I've done this with multiple nonprofits in the past. And I've also um, in, in, the, in the past done long-term planning with the association itself. And the last thing is um, we need to make sure that we're in legal compliance, right? Like uh, we, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's this, this, this assumption that, that, uh, that fundraising can be almost anything but it has to be significantly associated with the mission of the organization. Otherwise you can get in deep trouble with the IRS, lose your, use your uh, exempt status and so forth. Um, and I've got uh, extensive experience around that legal compliance piece as well in U S nonprofits. Hey everybody. I'm going to go. Jeff. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm very close to what John was saying. Uh, we usually have, um, put our fundraising in the main source of money for the Drupal Association on the event. But I think we, we should be in membership, but we should be more active and not only active looking for new sources of uh, grants outside of what we are getting right now, but also uh, on, on what people can get from that money, from the, the nonprofit, in this case, the Drupal Association. Uh, Drupal has grown immensely, but uh, as we grow, the challenges are bigger and bigger. And uh, we've been working now. Uh, the Drupal Association has been working on 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 sort of you know fixing them, making it better, and, and those outcomes is what is going to drive. Uh, we saw a fantastic example. I think it's a fantastic example. Uh, Drupal Pitchbook, where <clears throat> we got some money raised for. Uh, a couple of projects, and even on the spot, we have like two thousand, five thousand dollars extra, and then somebody after that added uh, uh, WordPress, I believe, added more. And and the reason is because the projects that were proposed uh, were very valuable for the community, for growing Drupal, growing the community, and 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 and, and that is important. So. I, I think it's important to focus on that part as well. I would add on to what Carlos just mentioned. I think the two of the main um, ways to to improve and drive uh, fundraising is we need to think about how we're going to deliver value. I don't think it's enough to expect people to donate to get a good feeling out of it or for the kindness of their own hearts. That's great if they do, and that's great if you know um, if that. Uh, is a byproduct, but I think uh, when people are looking around for how to spend their money um, and you know where to contribute, they're looking to see you know how is it going, what is what are they going to get out of it? Whether it's organizations that are looking for exposure, whether um, you know it's tied to a specific um, a specific purpose or specific project. And I think Pittsburgh um, was an example of this. Pittsburgh. Uh, showed what could be done when um, we're tying it to very specific projects. People got excited about that. I was initially skeptical about the Pittsburgh idea, but to be in the room and to see the excitement that people got, people adding on and, and continuing, that really showed um, that we, when we can draw a direct line between someone's contribution and the, you know, as specific as possible to the effort, I think that really motivates people to give as opposed to a more general fund where we hope it's going to end up in the right place. And we know that there are, you know, more general needs. And, um, but I don't think it uh, elicits the same visceral reaction from folks um, when they're deciding whether to contribute or not. So 
I think those two pieces tying it as directly as possible, and that goes into transparency, but also just marketing as well, um, and figuring out what the Drupal Association can deliver of value, to, whether it be to an individual or to an organization. I kind of would like to piggyback on on that. Um, I, I know personally, like from all my companies, I've had a hard time convincing them to do the top dollar donation because they don't see the value in it. Um, and something I would like to say, I don't even know if it's possible, if it counts as like another event, but, you know, if we could organize any kind of like training. So, you know, they pay this top dollar event and it comes with a few hours of training with talking with the Drupal expert. It may help get, you know, kind of some of the questions that Mike have just posted, you know, the Drupal community has gotten smaller and it's getting smaller as Drupal gets more complex. I, I think events where people can get trained up on how the new process of Drupal is going um, may get may spark interest for more people to join. Um, also with the training, you know, companies can like it's like a you know a spreadsheet person would see value with that immediately. And you may get more companies willing to donate that way. Like they may just, you know, upgrade from the what is it, the bottom tier, like a thousand dollars to the next tier, like ten thousand dollars. Almost like swag for companies. Yeah, yeah, it, you know, it, 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 I, I think it would just any kind of like some kind of initiative of training could just hit a, a hit a number of buttons, get get more interest, get more interest from companies who you know aren't technical, you know. I say spreadsheet people. It's a term someone in my company used. Like they're not developers; they don't care about that. They just need to see value in the money they spend. And like trying to explain to them open contribution, you know, we all know the value, but a spreadsheet person doesn't. And I think showing like, oh, you know, also by donating, we get our, you get your name out there, you get, you get involved in the community and you get some little bit of training, you know, at the same time. So, you know, I think, I think some, something along those lines, I think could help, especially in the future where, you know, if, if the community continues to shrink, may help boost those numbers i'll stop now um i'll go oh, ahead i was going to chime in i'll be i'll be quick um I, I i laughed when i saw this question a little bit i've done just a very small amount of of fundraising and so my first thought was what is my approach is my approach is gratitude for the people who are, who are putting the work in because it can be really exhausting and you know based on the answers here it's really I think visible that there's a lot to it. There's a really, uh, you know, multi-year strategic plan that goes into building something. And, you know, in my experience, I've seen two different strategies. One is you can cast a wide net, cold call a lot of people and hope that, you know, people are going to bite. And the other strategy is that you can work really hard to build something meaningful that people are going to want to support. And so, you know, Stephen, listening to what you said about companies might not want to donate that much money because they just don't see value in it. But, you know, I think it's really important to emphasize the value of the work that we're doing here and the value of the community and you know, this really beautiful thing that we're building. And uh, that's not easy. So, um, yeah, I think that was the gist. So I'm gonna support the people who are who are doing that work. Yeah. And um, I'll give my response as well. So um, the Drupal Association is a really big deal. And I feel like they don't position themselves um, effectively as such. Um, Drupal is the livelihood of so many individuals, but also so many companies. And um, as many people have said here, um, companies want to see value or a direct map to um, the money they donate. Um, they want to see what happens with it. Um, and then they also want to, in some cases, um, to get approval from you know, the higher ups in their company, they might want to um, map it to a business outcome. And um, again, the Drupal Association is a big deal, is powerful. I think 
you know, training is a good option. You can say training by the Drupal Association, by the official, you know, um, Drupal organization, et cetera, um, to help your team members get certified or whatever it may be. Um, but also we've got uh, Drupal.org, the whole contribution credit system. And the fact that some companies do employ um, full-time contributors, um, full-time contributors. If you think about that, some of the core contributors, they're hopefully some of the best paid developers, right? So just the fact that companies are employing uh, core contributors here and there shows that um, they are willing to invest a lot of money in that relationship, in the, in the fact that they get that many contribution credits from a core contributor maintaining Drupal. Um, I think that really should be made accessible to um, a lot of other Drupal companies, you know, smaller Drupal companies that maybe can't afford to sponsor a full core contributor. The Drupal Association could be the middleman for that process, the middle person for that process. <laughs> um, they could, um, for example, um, solicit donations from various mid, you know, small to mid uh, sized Drupal companies um, and essentially say, you are donating specifically for core contribution. The Drupal Association could, for example, hire the core contributor themselves um, and hopefully, you know, raise above and beyond the expenses. Um, and, you know, the, the companies who are doing the donations can get the contribution credits from, from that core contributor. Just one example of, you know, the fact that the Drupal Association does obviously have a significant standing in the community and does have the power to deliver value more directly, I think, at a larger scale than what many of the initiatives are doing. Um, and more recently, we have seen the Drupal Association go with this migration program where people pay to have their companies listed. I think that's great. It's another example of them raising funds and delivering value back to the company um, you know, it's a very, you know, direct path and a very impact in a very impactful way. Um, so, you know, more of that, you know, again, that was just one idea. It's not the whole strategy. It, the over, the real idea is more of, you know, delivering value in significant ways, um, and hopefully targeting organizations that can be paying multiples of employee salaries, maybe half a, half of one employee, you know, two employee salaries worth, rather than looking for $100, $100 per month for getting a listing on the website. Um, so yeah, it's not easy. I'm, I know I'm making it sound easier than it is, but um, that's the type of thing I'd like to explore. I'll add my three points to the list. Uh, first one would be, actions rather than words. So I uh, volunteer for various uh, events, working for various non-for-profit organization. Uh, I help organize things like sporting events, technical conferences, movie festivals as well. So I know that, uh, you know, uh, there is a chain of command, but also there is, um, uh, there is more you can do with showing uh, what you're doing and what your role is rather than talking about it over and over again. Uh, second one is education over in enforcement. Being a teacher myself, I, uh, I know the value of actually a uh, spending the time educating the person and seeing the result of that. So same goes for you know um, running the association or helping association to reach particular goals. Uh, uh, I had a, quite a few interesting chats in Slack, in Australian Slack uh, for Drupal and Australian channel uh, over the last few days about what Drupal cessation goals are and what they actually do. And it was quite interesting to see how many people don't realize what Drupal cessation does and what they uh, yeah. don't do. So that was um, yeah, quite an interesting to see that the you know, uh, community sometimes is not aware of what association do. So I think that goal should be um, kind of forefront and communicate it well enough. And the last one is clear direction and communication. So it's all about openness, uh, openness about direction, openness about where the funds go and openness about what uh, the organization gonna do with the funds once they collected them. That's me. 
Thank you. Awesome. So we're going to move into some questions from the chat. Um, shout out to Mike Herschel. He put a lot of great questions in. Um, we're going to start with um, the first, what does the DA do great and what could the DA do better? Anyone who would like to jump in? I, I think um, I've been in talks on things uh, that the DA can do in different times, uh, moments of time. Uh, and uh, when we were doing Drupal Con Latin America back in 2015, I was very lucky to be part of the Colombian team, even living in Houston at the time to 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 do it. And uh, before that, the every time we talk about the Drupal Association, the community feeling or what it felt like the community feeling is like Drupal Association, you focus on DrupalCon, Drupal.org, do not interfere in Drupal. Uh, and, and, and today that has changed, I believe. Uh, I think uh, Ryan's Rama on the drop time put it in a better way that I can put it, but there is so much that the Drupal Association can do for Drupal, I mean, with interfering, but just interfering in the future of Drupal. Uh, like the other question that Mike is, is, is bringing is how do we stop the community? How do we grow the community again? How do we bring new people again? How do we uh, facilitate everything? Like uh, uh, all that has been done with uh, GitLab facilitates that bots actually move forward. In, in, in an easier way, which is fantastic because we have too many patches going around in, 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 in real projects. Um, so I think uh, uh, the position of what the Drupal Association can do for Drupal is every time more clear. We still have things that one may like or not and on what they, uh, the association can do, but moving from being the maintainer of Drupal.org and the host where Drupal core is uh, to a more, the Drupal association is an association to increase the community, the Drupal and, main, and maintainability and sustainability of the project is, is fantastic. Uh, what we can do better is still work on the uh, contribution credit uh, scale, uh, which is one of the reasons that I especially joined this selection because I have some, uh, we'll talk about that later, but to make sure that that credit system is not about who pays more or who has more developers that they pay just to contribute to, you know, climb, but which is as well, but that is, it shows Drupal knowledge and for the external world, it becomes like, if you are on the top and, and I need a project, if you are in the in the list, I can trust you know Drupal. You're gonna do a good project in Drupal and I can, my company that doesn't know anything about Drupal can trust you. So I, I hope I explained it well, but uh, the right now it's a good system, but it still needs tweaking. You know, I I uh, I think we need to be very careful about about um, expanding the boundaries of what the association does and doesn't do. Um, uh, we have to be very careful to understand that the association really is around governance of the project as a whole. And if we try to if we try to put ourselves in a situation where the association also becomes um, an arbiter of contributions. And a de facto contribution uh, set of co uh, of code contributors and so on. Um, I think we're going to find ourselves uh, um, expanding beyond what uh, uh, an organization of its size can effectively effectively govern. Um, we really should be looking at how we facilitate others to do the work that needs to get done around around uh, uh, around core work and and so so forth and i think the association has done a pretty good job uh around around those kinds of activities over over the years they've done a very good job around uh, organizing events um and uh, and so so on um i would agree that the that the uh that the uh um that the uh credit system um, it still needs some work. It is so much better, though, than it was 
even even four or five years ago. Um, you know, I, I I haven't done much coding in in quite a long time. Um, I'm a I'm a hand waver and a paper paper pusher these days. Um, um, but I am extraordinarily involved in organizing events, and I'm on the you know in the events organization working group and so on. Um, and having having the opportunity to get credits for those kinds of contributions that aren't code contributions has been really you know, kind of, kind of awesome. Because when I started in Drupal in 2006, um, for, you know, I think it was 4.7.4 or something like that. Um, there, it was all about, uh, it was all about code. It wasn't about uh, community as a whole. So I think one of the things that, that the association has done a great job of is, is fostering that community and creating opportunities and environments in which that community can can uh, can flourish and uh, and do do amazing things. Um, I agree that uh, you know from again what uh, what Herschel Mike Mike Herschel was saying around uh, around uh, shrinking community, what we can do uh, to 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 reverse that. That goes right back into what uh, what the association does well um, um, or and and could do better, and that really is reaching out to um, honestly younger folks. One of the things that I've noticed is that we've aged, right? When I started in Drupal, um, you know, the, sort of the median age was like 28, 29 years old. Um, and now you see a whole bunch of people like me with gray hair um, who, uh, who are kind of the old timers now. Um, and it, you're seeing fewer and fewer younger people coming in. Part of that is uh, a function of uh, of younger people not seeing PHP as being cool, right? Despite the fact it's a really, really solid, solid framework. Um, one of the things that I discovered when I started working with, like uh, with my with my with uh, my niece and uh, and a few other folks who are young, and uh, my nephew who who uh, who uh, um, you know didn't think that uh, Drupal was particularly cool. He's a young guy. He's like. 24, 25 years old. And it really was outreach. It was really talking to folks about what Drupal can do, how you can use it to build almost anything, showing examples, spending time with uh, with younger folks. I'd love us to be reaching out to um, universities um, and colleges, community colleges, um, and, uh, and uh, seeing whether there are any opportunities for partnerships within uh, computer science departments where where uh, where young folks can can uh, can start to get a sense of uh, of of the power that this tool has, and furthermore, we could uh, we could extend that to um, you know working working with uh, with uh, with some of these uh, young folks uh, in paid internships. They don't need to be paid very much, but paid internships around uh, um, uh, around how to contribute and uh, and get them into some of these con contribution sprints. Get them uh, get them involved. We know that when people get involved younger, they tend to they tend to be involved for the rest of their lives. I think um, the number one thing that the Drupal Association does well is that they do a lot with a little. Um, you know, I think, um, and that sort of. uh you know goes over all of the other things that i think the da could do better um i think the da could do better with communication and transparency um being uh more open to the community of what's going on what's being discussed and and not just from a um you know allowing sunshine on on all of those pieces but also i think it's a way to get more people involved if people don't know what's going on what's being discussed what's being debated it's really hard and um you know to to get them excited and interested and involved um i think the da has been good about reinventing itself um and reinventing mm -hmm. what they're spending resources on we i think it needs to do an even better job i think that um We've seen that this with the GitLab transition. Um, I am constantly thinking about, um, you know, what if Drupal was being started today as a project? Um, we wouldn't be using the same tools that we were using now. We've the Drupal community and the Drupal Association have built a ton of tools that filled a need when they were created. 
um, we needed to build um, you know, the issue queue system and the patch system, all the tools that involve that because there weren't the same tools that are available today. We've now, as a community, looked out in the community and said, well, we can use GitLab and it's taking us a while to get there, but we can use GitLab for, um, for merge requests, for issues, and we can get this off of our plate as far as maintenance and maintainability. As a community, the Drupal Association should not be spending a ton of its resources on maintaining those tools when we could use very robust tools that the wider open source community has um, uh, has developed. And we need to continue to do that. That's going to continue to change over time. There's going to be new opportunities for that as the years go on. Um, and last but not least, the credit system was mentioned. There has been a ton of work over the last year plus, maybe two years, over improving the credit system, um, pushing back against gaming of the credit system. And I think all of that, uh, I've been involved in many of those discussions. All of that is very valuable. One thing that I am always thinking about when those discussions are going on is how to make sure that we are also considering how those changes impact new contributors. Um, it's it's a great thing. It's a great effort for us to um, try to make the experience better for maintainers and, and sort of protect them a little bit more from dealing with people trying to game the system. Um, but if that results in even a few uh, new people joining the community that in, that hit a wall that wasn't there before or have an experience people, you know, maybe they're mistaken for someone who's trying to game the system when they're really just um, someone who's newer and doesn't understand all those things. That's a big red flag to me. I want to make sure that, um, you know, people's entrance into the Drupal community and Drupal ecosystem is a great experience, you know, whether they're contributing to documentation, events, or code or any other non-code contributions that they feel appreciated uh, and rewarded. And hopefully that will keep them, make them more likely to keep coming back. Go ahead, Asha. I'll go next. Yeah. All right, Vlad, yeah. John, you wanna go? Yeah, go ahead, Vlad. Um, no worries. So I think uh, I'll I'll be quick. So I think uh, there were a few great ideas there, and uh, what can do better. In my case, it's efficiency. Um, I think efficiency uh, is great. Currently, at Drupal Association, what they do, how much they do on the shoestring budget, and what they do with Drupal.org. Uh, there was plenty said about uh, contribution credits. I'm part of GitLab community as well, and actually can approach contribution um, a bit differently. Um, and that's kind of one of my things on my profile, if you want to read a bit more about that. But uh, efficiency in terms of, uh, as I said, the uh, association did a lot of on the shoestring budget. They actually um, also organizing the events that do great thing, but also efficiency uh, can be improved. Uh, always can. Uh, in my case, uh, my small agency a few years ago were able to pay Drupal association fees. Uh, uh, so we actually took uh, three months and pinned one of the mails to get listed on Drupal.org. Uh, but once we stopped paying Drupal uh, uh, association fees, it only took a week to get delisted, right? So uh, basically three months versus a week. I think efficiency can be improved there just on this little uh, thing. And I'm sure there's, you know, um, you can always improve efficiency on any level. That's me. Awesome. Would anybody else like to share on that question before we move forward? Yeah, I can. I can throw in a couple summarizations real quick. Uh, I think most of most of this has been said. Uh, just rephrase it slightly. Uh, I think. The association does an amazing job at running the infrastructure to support the community and running events. Um, it is crucial that those things happen, and I, I don't think those should stop. I think what they they need to improve on is marketing, uh, promoting the project and engaging outside of just these these two forums. 
Um, I think the, the association has maybe a branding problem and doesn't have enough uh, of a microphone to target the, the wider audience like a lot of our competitors do, like a lot of other projects do, especially funded companies. Um, and uh, with without that microphone and that connection to new audiences and, and new talent, uh, I, I think the, the community will continue to shrink. Um, and I, I don't think it's all in the DA, but the DA needs to be a, a, a crucial piece of this. Um, and I think there's a lot of ways to go about doing that. We talked about uh, engaging new communities. We talked about uh, engaging with younger talent, getting into universities, educating people, just like like universities are full of JavaScript programs right now and React programs. And they think that this is the only way to get a job coming out because it's the new, It's it, 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 everyone's doing it, right? Uh, but I think all of us on this call have had Drupal make such a big impact on our lives from our careers and we built businesses around it, right? I, I've gone from a developer to a CEO of running a, a Drupal practice through this community. And if we can engage people, sh share our success stories and share the value of being a Drupalist and having Drupal in your skill set, I think that will drive uh, more younger talent into, uh, into Drupal and, and help us build that. And then combine that with building partnerships, right? Like let's work with other open source communities. Let's work with other tools and platforms that we integrate with. Let's let's spread uh, the message and, and leverage channels that we can do to do that. And this all comes down to marketing. So I think the number one focus for the DA needs to be around brand and marketing and, and driving uh, more people into the community, more awareness of the Drupal project. And uh, a lot of the infrastructure and things that we've already got in place that they're running really well of course it needs to continue needs we can't stop what we're doing there um but you know i think this is this is the primary thing that they need to focus on yeah i want to i want to jump in and yeah i think actually what i want to communicate is fairly aligned but maybe through a different lens with what, what you just shared john i think the drupal association has done a really good job of emphasizing the values and principles. And I think that that is an incredibly important thing to do when you're building a community like an open source community like ours, um, that is so value driven. You know, this is, this is how we grow the community is by really leaning into those, those values and bringing in other people who are value aligned. And I think that the emphasis on the values and principles that at, at least from my perspective is great. But you're know, talking about communication pipelines and, and the brand. Um, I think that that's a really good point. And I, I agree. And part of the reason that I'm here is because there is a communication breakdown between, you know, what's happening when the Drupal Association is doing strategic planning, when they're, when they're talking to each other, I, I understand that they're talking to each other about how to apply those values and principles and how to grow the community and how to do the right thing. Every single individual person who is either a board member or, you know, in any kind of leadership, community leadership position has been so authentic in, in their desire to uphold values and to do the right thing and support people. But the communication breakdown um, results in sort of, you know, there's a, there's a, I think there's a lack of visibility into what different communities, especially marginalized communities need to see and hear um, and what action needs to happen. And I'm not, it doesn't even have to be huge you know, sometimes it's just an acknowledgement of impact and that's it. And that can, that can go a long way, but I think that there's a communication pipeline breakdown um, that's making it so that people who are on the board, people who are doing the strategic planning don't always have insight into what's happening in different sort of sub-communities. Um, again, especially marginalized communities who, who don't always get to have a voice, who sometimes have to work extra hard to be heard or just don't have representation. And so I think that the Drupal Association could do better at really building and fostering and emphasizing those communication pipelines. Um, but that's not that's not a small lift, you know? Um, 
it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of work to build trust and it takes a long time and it takes a lot of dedication so you know i hope i hope that this is something that um that i can help with um you know i'm willing to do the work as as a ddi lead a drupal diversity and inclusion lead um, i recognize how big it is to say that i'm willing to do that but um, i think it's really important we do need to build those communication pipelines. We do need to show people that their voices can be heard. And so, yeah, I think that's, that's a different way of saying the brand. <laughs> the brand has been damaged, um, especially over the last you know year or so, I think. Um, and we need to work to fix that. I, I hear you entirely, Faye, right? Like one of the things is that it takes a ton of time to build trust um, but it takes almost no time for trust to get to get to, to get damaged. And we all know, you know, there's this elephant in the room. Faye was just sort of insinuating, you know, about it around around uh, um, diversity and inclusion with some of our some of our some of our uh, uh, hosting partners and bad things that have been happening around around uh, relationships between long time long time Drupal contributors in the those companies and communication breakdown and really really startling things that uh, that affect the brand as a whole right um and uh, and I think I think the 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 association um, needs to be super careful about standing on the on the sidelines around these kinds of these kinds of issues that could affect the overall brand of of Drupal. Um, and um, I I've literally heard um, folks who have been looking at uh, at uh, Drupal as potentially a um, a solution amongst other solutions who have looked at the whole Pantheon th situation and 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 and. Uh, honestly uh, branded Drupal based on what they were seeing there and that's not fair to the community as a whole um but it but but sometimes things aren't fair right and and we we need to figure out um as a as a as a as a as a body as a community and the association needs to be in the center of it how do we solve these problems yeah but I think it's also really important to emphasize that, what happened at Pittsburgh this year and just before Pittsburgh this year is not the problem. Um, and, yeah. I, and I think that hyper fixating on this one event is not healthy. It's probably just frustrating. We're burning ourselves out, but I do think it's a jack yeah. engine light. Right. And the fact that you know, we are still hurting <laughs> as a community and the fact that the damage has not been repaired from this one event um, is really indicative of the fact that there is a lot of work that needs to be done here. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I just want to emphasize, we can only face forward and I want to face forward and I want to talk about how we can strengthen our community, how we can do better, how we can uphold our, our values and principles that we all truly do believe in so strongly. Um, and how can we bring those marginalized groups in and make sure that they get voices too moving forward so that if and when something in the future happens, because it will happen. things things happen. We're not. We're, it's not going to be happily ever after. There are going to be challenges in the future. We need to be ready for it. Thank y'all. This is a very important conversation, and I'm hoping that um, we can parking lot this now and come back to it. Um, but we're going to get to some more questions from the chat. But again, thank you all for engaging in that question. So we're going to zoom out for a second and we're going to, let me get to the question. We have tons of them in here. All right. So we're going to zoom out for a little bit and um, chat a little bit more about um, a board and its governance. And how would you describe the role of a board member? How would you describe the role of a board member? So uh, governance is the primary function of the board, right? Um, and uh, um, uh, I was the chair of the governance, governance committee when I was uh, uh, on the association board the last time. Um, and there are boundaries that you have to that you have to uh, 
sort of uh, sort of uh, lay up, lay upon. For example, um, the board itself and board members are responsible for governance, organizational partnerships, um, operational functional uh, uh, functions, um, and responsible for the mission, values, goals, the organizational health, the viability and survival of the organization. And then there's a partnership that board members have with the staff for things like strategic planning, organizational evaluation, finance policies, membership, employment terms, stuff like that. Um, and and uh, and board members need to need to be in a position where they are fall, falling within those those guardrails and not sliding over into the functions that uh, that the actual staff are supposed to engage in. Um, so, you know, at the at the core of it, um, a board member, their responsibility is to work with all the other board members with a single voice. They can have um, they can have uh, uh, disagreements within the board itself, but when a decision's made, they act as a single voice. Um, once that decision has been made, um, in order to ensure the survival of the uh, of the organization, that's the core piece of it. Uh, I just want to add on, you know, specifically this board seat is elected by the community. Um, so I think, you know, it's having the voice of the community that elected you, just like any other elected position, you should make sure you speak on the, like, if there's problems in the community and it's not getting to the Drupal Association, I think it's this particular board seat's role to make sure that it is heard and things are going well, yeah. I think. You know, that should get brought up to the association, but, you know, and, and not saying like that's not happening at all by any means. I'm just, I think that is the important role of particularly this um, seat. Yeah, I think that's a really I, I, important thing to point out. And also that we should emphasize um, that uh, the role of the seat is not to show up and have an opinion. Um, it is to represent the community, which means doing the work to reach out to people in the community. I don't think that it's enough to say my door is open, waltz in, um, because that is only going to result in more highly opinionated people sharing their opinions that have probably already been heard. So I think that this role, it's it, it has a, a special importance um, because you really need to do the work to be involved in the community and not just have an individual opinion about your section of the community or your own personal lived experience. I agree yeah, with, I, we, <laughs> I agree with ahead, all that's, sorry. <laughs> I agree that with all that's been shared, I would add on top, I think, um, recognizing the difference and the lines, the delineation between um, the work on the Drupal project versus the Drupal association as a whole, staff and board, and then the board itself. Um, I think that it's made sometimes confusing for, for even people that are very involved since, as far as I know, all of us are, you know, community members, you know, and have opinions and voices about what the project should be doing, where the project should go. Um, and that is valid and appropriate. But then um, as a board member, we're talking about what the association should be doing. And that's in support exactly. of the project, but it is not about influencing the direction of the project itself. Um, so that's something that I think is important to keep in mind for whoever is going to end up sitting in the seat, but also for everyone who um, is going to be voting on the seat. I'll add that it's a two-way communication channel. Uh, so we basically uh, need to listen to the community and their concerns and bring them to the board. But at the same time, we also need to uh, funnel the board uh, goals and uh, align with them and communicate them back to the community as well. So there is no misunderstanding between the two parties. I think, I mean, uh, we're all going to be in agreement on, on, on the part that Matthew said before, as well as he said, uh, you know, we have to be part of the community. We have to keep everything in the straight line, uh, for lack of a better word, help, you know, that's the board, 
but also, uh, I do think we can have an opinion, but we need to make sure to have that that opinion is really shared by the community. It is really something. It's not for my benefit, but as being part of the community and going to events and 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 things like that, um, is 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 going to uh, help guide whatever efforts we can because we cannot you know follow all every possible effort. You know, we talk about funding. There is not enough money to do that. There is not enough staff to do that, and and there are so many needs of the community. And I'm gonna misbehave a little bit here. Uh, we've been talking on the chat, and I think it's a good example. Uh, for those that don't know, I got my son into Drupal finally this year, and I took him to DrupalCon, and I I finally convinced him to do Drupal. You know, let's bring new people, and 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 then I realized and. Today, I realized that actually Ashraf has been thinking exactly the same that I've been thinking lately and talking with other people with the community. I think that is our job as, as part of the board, you know, reaching out and see, hey, I feel this. And I see the questions that are along those lines. How do we bring new people? Yep. Uh, and we've been talking about, uh, I, I, uh, I did this election in 2014 when we were doing DrupalCon Latin America and one of the things that I was hoping to help at the time was to bring the other communities like the Hispanic community I'm from Colombia I'm, I'm actually you know I'm now a US citizen after 17 years of immigration and stuff but I'm from Latin America and I know they don't feel completely uh, adopted by Drupal and the Drupal community and the Drupal association They we don't there is no Spanish, there is no, they have so many weird ideas of how it is. So I've been working with Drupaleros, uh, which is a community effort from Spain about the development uh, with my Canelo. And what I, uh, going back to my son, I discovered by looking for a job for him, we do not have a space for these people. We do not have a space for that person that knows Drupal and but it still needs to call you like my son does on every little thing that we you ask him to do. It. Is is that a CSS change? Is that a template? Uh, most companies need a junior, and a junior can be productive. That's a small task. That's other things, but can be put in a project that is making money and can be productive. These guys can barely do it, and. Some ideas were there. Ashraf mentioned some of them. I I I have been working with Drupal Eros with Mike Canelo from Drupal Easy on, on some ideas on that. And is now that the credit system is getting uh, more trust, which I think is part of the Drupal Association um, things that they can do. You know, the trust in Drupal and the they know who is working in Drupal and who knows Drupal because they have Drupal.org. I mean, it's where we all, you know, put the code uh, and that's what the credit system is trying to do uh, without discussing if it's good, bad or not right now. But as as was mentioned, and we've been talking about this uh, as well, uh, we need to find a way for companies to give them this space to these new people. And I wanted to talk about that because it's been discussed a lot in the chat. Uh, that's the way we bring new people. And I found something very interesting yesterday, and I have this, this I have this discussion with the Drupaleros and the Hispanic community. This is specific. Uh, we had like 50 people there. And one of the questions is, how can you not do it for your self-motivation and being better? Not everybody is self-motivated. I am not self-motivated. I, uh, I told the story that I wanted to get an Amazon certification, got one of those Udemy classes, I set the date and then two days before I had to see that videos like 2.5x because I forgot completely. I'm not self-motivated. What mo can motivate somebody that goes through Atlas training, Drupalisis training, Drupalero's ladder, they are creating that in Spanish is, is I can find a job. Doesn't have to be the job of a senior and getting the money of a senior developer, but I, I can start, keep training and living. Uh, one of the proposals different or what we added, Ashraf, uh, I've shared the document with Ashraf, sorry, uh, is uh, there should be an, a new category. And it's like the pre-junior, the inexperienced. 
that needs a little bit more of pampering. And I tell this in, 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 in terms of the board because this is the stuff that is an opinion of mine, it's an experience that I live with my son or I'm living with my son trying to find him a job where he goes like, I don't feel like I'm a junior. I don't feel like I can do what they put here for a junior yet. And, and then sharing it with everybody, with the larger Hispanic community, uh, and, and they all feel the same. Yes, I learned Drupal, but it takes two or three years to actually be able to say, hire me as a junior. Uh, and, and, and then talking to people that have been doing the effort, Ashraf uh, and Mike, they both have issues getting those trainees into jobs because they're not ready to be a junior. But what if we could, I don't know, leverage the credit system, this trust that has been created to also just not contribute code, contribute people by bringing new people. And, 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 and Ashraf put a part of, not my proposal, his proposal, but it's pretty much the same on the chat at some point. Uh, but anyway, going back to the original point, board, uh, I think that's what we need to do. We need to listen to that. But it comes from an opinion. It comes from our experiences. It comes from talking to other Drupalists, seeing what is happening in around the community and help. We cannot tell the Drupal Association or the staff what to do, but we can help them guide whatever resources we got and, 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 and work with it. Yeah, I, I want to I want to thank you for um, sort of emphasizing and talking a little bit about the Latin American community. This is one of the communities that I've noticed there is a massive communication break breakdown, and uh, you know, and this is exactly the kind of thing that I'm talking about when I say you know it's the responsibility of the person who is elected to fix that pipeline because when we're talking about how to grow the community, there is like all of Latin America. And a lot of the people who I've talked to when I say, hey, are you going to DrupalCon this year? My Latin American coworkers always tell me immediately no. And then I have to kind of ask them questions like, oh, is it finances? Oh, I can actually help you get your ticket comped. Did you know you can volunteer? Did you know you can get a visa? Did you know that, oh, here's a link to the visa information for your particular country. And there's there's like this lack of belonging almost um, that I'm hearing when you're talking about the Latin American community. And I think that, you know, voices like yours who can actually help speak to the challenges of the community and, and what the Latin American community actually needs to start breaking down the perception that events like DrupalCon are just completely inaccessible. Um, I think it's, this is critical. This is absolutely critical. So yeah, if we want to grow the community, and, let's talk to the Latin American developers. And, and, and Faye, it, it is possible. Uh, you all know Mauricio. Mauricio mm -hmm. Linarte. Yeah? Yep. Mauricio, uh, we started talking with Mauricio in 2013. And I remember, I don't know if he's around or if he remembers this conversation, is the question that all the Latin Americans... I. I was blessed when I got into Drupal because I was living in the States and it allowed me to understand the cultural difference on how Americans, which is the largest part of, of the main Drupal community besides Europeans, of course, and uh, uh, how they think and it's different to our culture, which is there are some things that, that not, do not allow what we do to be understood by Latin Americans. And he was asking, how, like, how do you talk to the DA? They ask me questions like that. And I'm, it's very easy to go to somebody of the DA and say, hi, that's how you talk to them. Because in Latin yeah. America, yeah. you don't go to the bosses. Yeah. Oh, that can be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and, we, and we were talking, actually, Mauricio started working with me, got it with some of my friends and, 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 and then he did his own thing based on that. And, 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 and it's, I'm so happy every time I see him. He's a great friend because he's like, I told you it was possible. This that was the path, and and but it's culturally really, really difficult. Sometimes I get some so many weird questions. I cannot remember on them. 
but from people that are thinking about that Drupal Association is doing something and the path of Drupal is going that way. And I'm trying to understand how the hell are you thinking that? Yeah. yeah. Nothing yeah, great... that we have said or done. Yeah. I, think I know that, we're a little, that's what they feel. We're a little we're a little off topic, but my, my two cents is just replace South America with global, right? I've I've seen yep. this in South America, I've seen this even more in India. India. Um and and these are two huge markets of Drupal that we don't have a conference in. We don't have uh a, enough of a voice and support and and Honestly, it's it's where more and more of the actual development of Drupal and usage of it is going. Um, and I think embracing these communities and expanding the global reach is certainly a way to foster innovation and foster talent and foster more uh, innovation uh, and, and to really compete in what's coming down the pipe in terms of competition. Um, so, you know, I think it's a great thing to bring up and I think uh, you and, and Faye said a great um, embracing those communities and, and yes. getting outside of just what we're focused on right now, North America and, and, and Europe mainly. But and and for those who don't know, to the... if, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry, if I can say something very quick, Matthew. For those who don't know, in 2014, Drupal Latin America, the, the, the contribution day is known as one of the most productive days, and it was only 230 people. Yeah. And uh, what was amazing, and something that came amazing from there for me, is I sat down with Megan Sanicki, she was the financial, and I was asking, yeah. did we do good? I knew all the money, I helped, so I talked to the hotels, I talked to everybody, I knew whatever we're, yeah. we were charged, I had the numbers in my head. And my numbers said, with so many tickets we sold, and blah, 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 we made money, and they told me, no, we didn't make money. Like, what? No. We lost? <laughs> Why? Well, we charge uh, the person that was organizing salary fully to that event. Wow. Like, why? She just didn't work on every day. We did a lot of the work on purpose. Yeah. And I then I talked to interrupt. her and I so said, we, we should franchise the DrupalCon. Now we have DrupalCon Europe that way. And I'm trying to get the Latin American community to eventually do a DrupalCon Latin America again in the next couple of years. So. Something very similar happened in India, right? Um, a number yeah, of years sorry. ago. We to, um, we're going to yeah. have to time block it because we're at two o'clock now. So we have to be so right. gonna, like parking lot this conversation. And Joy is going to lead us into closing remarks. Thank you, Vaughn. And thank you to all the candidates for engaging in such a great conversation. And um, like Vaughn said, we can just parking lot it. And if any of the community members, if you all have questions still, um, please head to the blogs on the uh, Drupal website and you can ask questions to each of the candidates underneath their blog post. And just a few reminders. So voting has begun. It began on um, September 12th and it will close on October 5th. So if you haven't voted, make sure to do that before October 5th. And then after that, the board will ratify for about 10 days. So from October 6th to the 16th, the board will take that time to do some ratification. And then the new, new board member will be announced at um, DrupalCon Leo at the public board meeting. So make sure to look out for that. And then of course we'll post on our social sites. Um, thank you to everyone for joining us. And it was so great hearing more from you. Thanks very much. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Everyone. Bye.